Can you stretch your right hand in my direction? Join your faith with mine and say, Lord Jesus, anoint your servant to preach your word with simplicity, with sincerity, with soundness of doctrine. Holy Spirit, circumcise my ears and fertilize my heart that the words I will hear we produce tangible results. I must come back with testimonies and testimonials of these words. Holy Spirit, take absolute control and glorify only the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout amen. Please be seated. I want to thank our father and our mama here for the grace upon their lives and for their love for the work of God and for this country. Please, can you clap for them? One of the most difficult jobs is to pastor. Two people who fell in love when you were not there, when they have problems, it's you that settles their questions. And sometimes, somebody like me, I'm very impatient. When they start narrating their stories, I'll find one pastor to send them to. I wasn't there when they started. And I found that they're preaching for one hour. It's like four hours farm work. Particularly when you have to preach on radio with a confined time and space. So it's not easy. The men have been taking very good care of me. I went to Takoradi to preach, and they were giving me salad and stuff to eat. And I wasn't preaching well. Then I asked them, do you have fufu here? And they brought fufu and unkrakra soup. And I ate very well, and I preached very well. And I told them that fufu plus Holy Ghost leads to fulfillment. I've been eating good food. Yesterday, I taught you from certification, career, and cash flow. We just did only a portion of it. I believe that you will have gone home to read what is there as part of the assignment before Wednesday because we're going to take questions from each booklet. It's a school we came to. It's not the excitement of the usual uh, men's fellowship. Because if you go down, you will see I didn't talk about um, savings. I didn't talk about savings in page two. If you save 300 naira every day for a child, in 10 years, that child will have 1.08 million. If you save 600 naira every day, in five years, you will have 1.08 million. If you can save 1,200 naira every day, in two and a half years, you have 1.08 million. If not for the currency exchange, there are countries that will take you to with 1.08 million. You just bring ICs and diodes, your life will change. ICs, those small, small things inside, cell phones, radios, televisions. So I didn't talk about the savings culture. I didn't talk about the simple lifestyle. The average industrialized nation, their citizens are, they live simple lifestyles. Somebody like Warren Buffett has been living in the same house since 1953. He doesn't have a handset. He has a private jet manufacturing company. He doesn't have a private jet. Now, I also did not tell you how to chart a career path. Before you chart a career path, you must ask yourself, what do you want out of life? My decision not to practice medicine beyond 40 was a personal choice based on my personality. I'm an in, I'm, uh, I like an independent lifestyle. My father answered too many yeses for people 
So I don't like yes sirs. I answer yes sir as a business plan, as a business strategy. Because you treat men like royalty, you get their loyalty. You treat men like trash, you don't get their cash. So when I tried to discourage my son from being a medical doctor, he refused. He still became a medical doctor. So I charted the path I took because I want to work according to my own plans and my own schedule. So I wrote in number eight here, number eight in page three, what is your exit plan? Anywhere you are working, anything you are doing, you must always ask yourself your exit plan. If you look at Rahab in the Bible, Rahab had flax on top of her roof. Before the advent of cotton wool as a major material for textile production, flax was the major material for producing clothes. So Rahab was a harlot, but she was an intelligent person. She had flax on top of her roof. She was also, also into textile production, knowing that younger babes were going to come into the profession of prostitution and that the demand for her will reduce, and so she planned ahead for an exit plan. You could see her smartness that before the spies slept, she went to negotiate with them. Instead of asking to sleep with them, which was easy money, she looked further on to planning for her future of how to leave Jericho. So when the walls of Jericho collapsed, her segment did not collapse. And she was able to rebrand herself. Initially, she was outside the camp. She was able to rebrand herself that she married one of the spies and became the great-grandmother of uh, Boaz. So what is your exit plan where you are working now? What is your exit plan? I know how I will be buried. I've told my children the three hymns to sing. I know how my obituary will look like. It will be Dr. Apoki, survived by Dr. and Dr. Mrs. Apoki. Dr. and Dr. this, Dr. and Dr. this. Because all my children will have PhD. I know how I will, uh, the one that is doing PhD in software engineering that is living with me in the hotel there now, I know he will be the rector of the Polytechnic. So what is your exit plan? The black man hardly thinks beyond the immediate. So I also talk to young people in this booklet. So I want you to go home, read that. We'll come back to that on Wednesday and ask questions. There are two booklets around. One is agriculture, a new frontier for wealth creation. Let me tell you one thing. Do you know after soaking apple in water, if you distill that, set, that water of Akbu, a liter of it is 9,000 naira. If you soak Akbu inside water, I mean that's the cassava, that remaining water, if you distill it like as you distill alcohol, the water, the, the chemical you will get in the receptacle, a bottle of it is 9,000 naira. We will hopefully talk about agriculture tomorrow if that is what God lays in my heart. We are going to look at excelling in an economic meltdown. Are you with me here? Are you with me? Excelling in an economic meltdown. If you go to Genesis chapter 21, Genesis chapter 21, from verse 1. <laughs> you will see there that, and the Lord, Genesis chapter 26, sorry, Genesis 26, 26, I'm sorry. Genesis 26. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. If you read in Ruth chapter 1, Ruth chapter 1, from verse 1. 
Now, it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. You will discover that even in the time of Joseph, there was famine. In the New Testament, there was a time there was famine and they were contributing things for the churches. In economics, there's something called economic cycles. Economic C-Y-C-L-E-S. One of the first major ones that took place was in 1921, the Great Depression. In economics, there's usually a cycle of bubble. Then you have a bust. In the bubble, there's so much money in, a, in and around. New inventions, new developments. After that, and usually around the end of the bubble, people will offer shares for sales. Naive people will rush into buying shares. Then the, the wise and the rich, it's called a, uh, the, the, there's an economic principle called the head effect. That is, if you frighten one antelope, all the other antelopes will run. If you frighten one flamingo, all the flamingos will fly. So towards the peak of the bubble, the wise will start selling off their shares and encouraging poor people to buy shares. Then after that, there will be an economic collapse. And then the wise will retreat. And then there will be new inventions, new cameras are going to come out, new um, systems are going to come out, new computers are going to come out, new things will start coming out, and the economy will bubble again, will bubble again. At a point, it will collapse again. After the Yom Kippur War, when the Arab nations invaded Israel, and the price of oil went up, there was bubble. When Shagari, Buhari, Shagari left office, or Buhari overthrew, it came in an economic meltdown. But there was a bubble before then. People were printing their names on champagne. And the cycle has gone full round. He has come in an economic meltdown again. Not necessarily because he's a Muslim. Not necessarily because of anything. I was telling them when he was contesting that this man will regret ever leaving his retirement to come and contest election. Even the corruption he wants to fight, Buhari will look like a solo sing, I mean, a, a lead singer singing, change, change, and the choir will be singing, shame, shame. Because they will do things very contradictory to what he is professing to say. I won't say more than that. But good intentions are not enough to handle an economic meltdown. You must know how to handle an economic meltdown, like as Barack Obama did when he came into the meltdown that he inherited from George Bush, who inherited a boom, and they inherited a boom from Bill Clinton. So now, what do you need to do when you have an economic meltdown? How do you survive? I know it is, it is not easy. I have never delayed paying salaries since I started business February 28, 1988. I had always paid salaries on time. Last month, last two months was the first time I delayed salaries to on the 10th. Very difficult because parents were owed eight months, nine months, five months salaries and they couldn't pay school fees. What do you need to do in a meltdown like this? Number one, hear from God. Hear from God. Hear from God. You will need, I told you yesterday I was able to deduce the fact that we are going to experience a meltdown because of fracking. Hear from God. Three years back, I knew about this meltdown, so I refused to increase school fees. Other schools were increasing school fees. I was waiting. As the meltdown came, people started withdrawing children from their schools. Now they are coming to mind. Am I talking to somebody? What I did before the meltdown was that I started upgrading. In the building where my school is, I have 30 toilets. And so I started making the ones that would be functional, like hotel toilets. Made them neat. 
accept and interlock the compound, started preparing for the, the there's, there's, there's nothing like, there's, it is not economic evaporation. It is economic meltdown. If you are a wise Urobo man, when you know where the fishes will pass, you put an uge, a trap. And so in a meltdown, you need to hear from God when you put the Holy Ghost uge to trap all the money that is melting. Somebody is not understanding me here. So, you, frankly speaking, I mean you need to hear from God. This is a time to be calm. It's a time to meditate. It's a time to pray. It's a time to interact with people who have vision for life. It was in a... When, when Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream, he did not suffer in the meltdown. Instead, he excelled. He was able to bring his family to Egypt during the meltdown and make them thrive. Are we still together? Now, one of the things that must happen, that we, we must do, is apart from hearing from God, which will hear from God concerning whatever we want to do, divine directives. Can I be sincere with you here? Can I? Because sometimes I'm afraid of preaching in churches. There is a network program that is coming now, MMM. It has collapsed in um, one country. In a meltdown, if there is no consumptive material that people buy, it is a great risk to get involved in a pyramidal program. If it is Alliance Global, you are seeing the tea that you will drink. Am I talking to somebody? I will offend somebody here, but I don't care. When they came to Ugeli with one kind of this thing, I told them I have taught it about money over the years. The first person to start that thing, his name is Charles Ponzi. And that's about a hundred years back. Then I have studied all of them. And then Bernard Madoff was jailed for 150 years, a few years back. Anything that you don't have a tangible product that you will buy, that people will use on a regular basis, in an economic meltdown, people don't have enough money to buy some things, and it is difficult to generate wealth that will give you 30% returns. If you like, kill me. If you like, stone me. If you like, tell the bishop to tell me not to come tomorrow evening. But I've told you the truth. And your, your, your losses will not be on my head. Am I talking to somebody? Mathematically, mathematically, and economically, it is not possible now. I have done all kinds of businesses. I have imported medicines. I have imported fish meal. I have sold cars. I have run hospital. I have run school. 30% profit is very difficult to get. And that's why one of the bad economic policies that is in Nigeria now is the high interest rate. When there was a meltdown in America, the interest rate was between 0% to 1 point something percent so that people can have access to money and generate employment for people. Are we still together here? Are you angry with me? I don't really care if you are. The question you must ask yourself, when gold package came to Ugeli, I was the one that was giving gold package in Oweri when I went to run an economic empowerment seminar. I rejected it. I rejected it. And I warned the churches, they didn't hear. They abused me. When all their monies got lost, when people committed suicide, I was not guilty because I preached the truth. Praise the Lord. Now, the next thing is that you must, God told, uh, God told uh, Isaac, he said, don't go to Egypt like your father. This is the time to question things. Now, if the person who is bringing this thing to you is so good, 
Why you never show sure unto your family people when they come look for you? Ask yourself. If you are doubting me and you, I will tell you the system, how it works. If you want your system to work, make somebody like Dr. Apoki, who is popular, win. Then you say Dr. Apoki self has won. So, <laughs> don't follow the routine. What has been might not work now. Am I talking to somebody? That includes a change of lifestyle. Your kids, I, I hardly eat bread for breakfast now. Potato is cheaper for me now. Am I talking to somebody here? So, it, madam, madam, are you listening to me? It cannot be as before. If that 15,000 Naira cream is not available, please look for the one of 2005. It, <laughs> it cannot be as before. So, if Isaac had gone to Egypt to marry another Egyptian, the church would have died earlier than now because only one Egyptian woman that gave birth to Osama bin Laden, we have not recovered from it. Okay, okay. Now, one of the things you must believe in, you see, I'm a very relaxed human being. I don't panic. I have covenants with God. I have served God. When I see a big man that can employ me, coming to carry me from the hotel, sometimes I want to feel guilty. But I was the driver of my bishop. I imported the car. He was... I was using to carry him. I carry my bishop behind and I fasten my seatbelt and I drive him. I have run church school very profitably. My school, the school I ran for Church of God Mission, became richer than the church in two years. There's no reason why my own should fail because I have a covenant with God. I am not here because I'm supposed to be here. I promised God when I was soaking Gary without sugar a few years back that God, if you can teach me how to be rich, I will go around the world teaching others how to be rich. So I'm preaching. The day I preached here first, um, uh, challenges of the firstborn, I was going through this street and I said, God, I have preached in nearly every church along this road apart from Rainbow. Why? In two days, I received a phone call to come and preach here. And I was packing three sets of clothes, four sets of clothes. They told me, you do, they don't know you here, we'll put you in the, we'll do it in the children's church. And I was packing four sets of clothes. And my daughter asked me, Daddy, why are you packing four sets of clothes when you are going to preach in three places? I said, when I finish, Bishop Dave is going to tell me to preach on Sunday. Because God can hack websites. The God that had the website of www.pharaohs.org go and bath in the water side. The God that had the website of fish, www.fish swallow Jonah. The God that had the website of donkey, www.donkey speak Hebrew. The God that had the website of a, of, of, of a, of a lion, www.lion don't eat uh, uh, Daniel. www.crocodile don't eat Moses. Onye chukutere manu leya konabia. Went and had www.apostoimanaka. Bam. When I finish, I'm going to vex with me. When I finish preaching, he approached me and said, Dr. Charles, can you preach on Sunday? That's how I came here. This season, God is going to hack somebody's website for your sake. Because since I was young, now I am old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken. Neither the children of God begging bread. A thousand can fall by your right. Ten thousand shall fall by your left. It shall not come near you. Because you are like in Goshen. God will hack somebody's website. And that person that has forgotten you will remember you. God will hack the customer's website. They will look for you for that supply. God will hack somebody's website. They will look for you for that contract. Where they rejected you before, they will call for you.
I hear in my spirit a young girl here, a man is going to look for you. And it will change your family story. I hear it clearly. God is going to hack somebody's website. And so God spoke to Isaac. And let me tell you one thing. This is not the time to fall back from service. I used to, I used to, I had no suit for many years. I would give suits to pastors. Give suits to pastors. I don't wear wristwatches because of pastors. I can't afford to see their broken wristwatches. I had only two pairs of shoes because I couldn't afford to see pastors with their stockings coming out of their, out of their shoes. Today, I don't buy clothes. Everything I'm wearing, even if it is too much, God will coordinate this website. Somebody will donate this. This one came from Eket. This one came from Bini. Too much. I don't know if I told you yesterday, a young man gave me 24 pieces of suits. I was just thinking of the suits I will wear to Kenya to preach. And he called me and hosted myself, Umar Pai, and one other preacher with three million. Took very good care of me. And I prayed for him. Do you know that a Chinese woman called him and said, Call the name of his company. He said, I'm going to send you five containers. When you sell, return money. How did she make that? That boy cannot host us, and then he will suffer. Three million to host us. When he parks his car in front of the hotel I stay, he will use Keke to go away, that if I want to go anywhere. When I wash my hands, he will put his hand. He was house boy to the church, the pastor of the church where I used to preach. Two people went to China and they were making fun of him and they were laughing. And the Chinese woman asked them, why are you laughing? He said, there is that boy that one day he sold 1,200 pieces of suit. And we don't know what is wrong with him. That was the day he gave me the first five in area area market. And I prayed for him. I was to go to Romania at that time. And I prayed for him. He sold 1,200 pieces of suits in a day. He told me that there was a riot. And they were using it to make fun of him. The Chinese woman said, so he sells a lot. He said, yes. And he called the young man. He said, I'm sending you five containers. Sell, return money. In one year, he sold 24 containers of 25 million each. He built a, a five-story build, I mean, a, a ten-flat building, five stories, ground floor, four, uh, first floor, fourth floor, with ten flats, gave one flat to the church as tight. That year, he has been looking for a male child. The wife conceived subsequently, delivered a male child in America. He's a primary sixth boy, but is married to a master's degree holder. Both the grace and the suffering of being a pastor's house boy and what he is doing. In his 40th birthday, he bought a car for the church, donated 700,000 naira generators. So, there are some of you, you were here in the beginning. You have labored and labored and labored. It is as if God has not rewarded you. But God knows that if there are too many, in a currency, there are not too many signatures. When there are too many signatures on a thing, it's graffiti. When God wants to do his thing, he does this so that people can know it is God. And what God will do in somebody's life, in this period, you will know it is God. Last two weeks, I was in a glory land just across here, preaching in the Assemblies of God convention. And a young girl came out and shared a testimony how God instructed him, I mean, instructed her after their last convention to buy a product of 200 naira. That thing has run into multiples of thousands. She bought 200 sold, 200 sold, hundreds of thousands of naira. 
you will not dream bad dreams this period. It is dream, dream that will show you something. Am I talking to somebody here? Something, a revelation that will change your story. The next thing was that Isaac sowed in the land. Please forget, forgive my theology. Isaac sowed in the land was primarily an agricultural investment. I will explain that to you. I give a lot. I invest a lot. When I come from missionary work, some of the places I go to for missionary work, see, every missionary work I have gone for, I sponsored myself. When I went to Australia, I told you I bought the ticket, 508000 They couldn't give me my honorarium back. But as I got to Lagos, Lee Engineering, I was their family doctor. He gave me $3,500. If you see me matching ground there, because when I go for missionary work, I'm always afraid of my wife. She will say, people, they go to America, then go bring money. Come. Your own, the small money we will get for her. You can't carry and go one place. When you, they use horse, take the travel. Where I went to in Ethiopia, it was horse. Where I went to in Kenya, guest speaker, is bicycle they used to come and carry me. We are going in a convoy of bicycles. Me, the guest speaker, I was in the white bicycle with one poly, one rubber at the back with line, line like this. And I told my wife, now bicycle, then take carry me. He said, are you all right? <laughs> but any time I come back, one of the, the, the trips I came back, trees were growing in the building I was to deck. I said, Father, I have done your work. See my own work. I cannot explain how I built that house. Money started coming. Believe God that you will not serve him in vain. It might even be necessary to remind him like Nehemiah. Is it Nehemiah that said, God, remember me for this thing? Am I talking to somebody? This is a time you need to, you know, the Brexit plan now, there is Article 50 that they want to invoke by March. There are some articles of services you have done with God here. You need to invoke them. You need to sing some Yoruba song. Ba mi she, ba mi she, ba ba o ba mi she. Aye ma bere, polorumi da. God help me so that what people will not say, where is your God? Am I talking to somebody here? This is not the time to sing Buhari's song. Sing the Lord's song. Isaac had divine security and assurance. Some of the things that will happen this period, you will think that they are troubles. No. God is using them to secure you. See, when Isaac was romancing his wife, we will come to the romance later, playing African romance, the king saw him. And what he did to what happened between Isaac's father and his grandfather or father wanted to happen again. When he realized what happened before, he said, no man should touch Isaac. Recently, somebody entered my son's room. I usually tell them, this is not Europe. Hide your things well. We told the plumber to go and repair something in their rooms. And he took 100 and, he saw a wallet and took 100 and something dollars and took Romanian currency, about 380 something runs. Small boy. And he went away with the money. And God told me, it is the plumber that took the money, his boy. And I called him and confronted him with worry sense. He agreed that he took the money. As I'm here now, they've returned the money. But you know what happened? That same boy has a land we want to build a residence for him in the community where the case was settled. And the president general of that community has become my friend. So when we are going to build it, the there will be less. Because he will say, this is my God. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. What looks like trouble has turned to become good. I don't care. Even if they give you quick notice now, it will make you angry to build your own house. Am I talking to somebody? If they did not sack Steve Jobs from Apple, I mean Steve Jobs from uh, one company where he was working, is it Google or whatever, he will not have formed his own company. You know Steve Jobs was adopted. His father was a Syrian, Jandali. And Clara, Clara and Jobs, uh, 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 and Jacob Jobs adopted him when his, his, his own, the grandfather of Catherine 
said, throw away that thing. Am I talking to somebody? So, be rest assured that no matter what happens, God will see you through. Why was Isaac able to play love with his wife? He had reserved grains. He had reserved grains. He had reserved grains. Two things I will say quickly. In the meltdown in Ruth's time, anytime she went to her best and gleaned, she kept some that she took home. This is not a time to waste food. Particularly you are Jebota children. I've gone to several rich homes. I discovered that they don't put stew on top of rice in a rich man's house. They put the stew separate and put the rice separate. You think they throw away the remaining stew? It's a lie. They crocronize it and put it inside freezer. Am I talking to somebody? This is not a time to put fuel in your car. Leave the AC on and be gisting with somebody. Don't walk. When I travel to Europe and developed countries, there are televisions. If you are not watching the television, it goes off. Some hotels I stayed, once you leave the room, the lights strip off. You climb staircases. Once you leave one stair to the next staircase, the light will trip off because they conserve electricity. We are too wasteful. We are too wasteful. This period, please, have reserve. There's no amount of, I can't share, I'm, I feel tempted to share some deep secrets with you, but I won't share with you. But you see, have reserve. Don't overpackaging without substance is the next neighbor to insanity. You overpackage without substance. You are the next neighbor to insanity. Am I talking to somebody here? Have reserve. Don't finish everything. Recently, I, went, I told my wife, go and buy, I gave money, go and buy 500 naira with Wero Granode. My wife called the girl back, come here. Buy 200 naira on. Add money, buy a basket of rice. The basket of rice lasted longer than the Wero Granode. I am a comfortable person. This is not a period of waste. Now listen to me. Isaac had reserve. I stayed in a hotel in Kenya called Stanley Hotel. It was founded in 1902. If you enter Stanley Hotel, the leaves are still oak, they are oak paneled. The toilet seat will frighten you if, you, if, you, if your head is not strong. The towels alone. The, the beautiful hotel, 1902. Brand new till today. The leaves don't make as if they need deliverance. But most hotels in town and Ugeli and all that, they don't survive more than 20 years. You know why? When a hotel gives you a hundred naira, 70 naira belongs to it. Because when you are going to paint it, change the televisions, change the benches, I always, I'm always amazed to see somebody's footprint on a wall in a hotel. What was he looking for on the wall? Where did he pass it to? You will see somebody will use hotel towels to clean shoe and throw down. By the time you are replacing the refrigerators, the air conditioners, the painting, the tiles, the, uh, the du is it duvet, they call that thing or whatever, you will discover that the money you will use sometimes is nearly as much as what you used to build the hotel initially. So when a hotel brings a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand, seventy thousand belongs to it. Don't eat it. Because it will need it back. Am I talking to somebody else? So always have reserve. Have reserve. Apart from church, reduce the number of burials you attend. I'm telling you the fact. If you belong to a club where you go to every burial, you donate 5,000. 5, and you are 100. You will donate 500,000 for stupid uh, fathers and others that died. Uh, I mean, uh, how many thousand? Before the year, uh, how many for uh, some number of years? The day your own father will live old and die, they will give you 100,000. You have lost. And they will eat more than 100,000. Me as a day, so I don't belong to any club. If I die, my children no come. Make a rotting. I've lived a good life. That's why I perfume myself to bed. 
When I want to sleep, I perfume myself so that when I turn and embrace my wife, I'm a sweet, uh, living sacrifice with a sweet smelling savour. Not be when I don't die, finish. Yeah, yeah, pick away no near where they will come to spray me perfume. Take your time. <laughs> I feel you too. <laughs> he had reserved. If you go around every community, I'm sorry to say, I'm not insulting any person, but I vowed to preach the truth. I'm from Otokutu here. My wife is from Okokoko and Okwikpere. If you go around the Geba, Boro, Kegberi, Koko, round, most of the Jaga Jaga houses are owned by natives. But they were the ones who sold the land to the person who built a good house. Money is not people's problems. It is the mentality of managing money that is people's problems. And so you must have a very prudent and simple lifestyle that will make you in such a way that at times like this, you must know how to manage resources and then invest in long-term things. When my mates were buying cars, when I came to Ugeli Newly, ah, some of my in-laws and my friends buying cars, Mercedes flat boot, you see the rain? I was buying land. Buying land. Today, there is no Pentecostal church in Ugeli or Pentecostal pastor that has more land than me. None. None. I was buying. I was thinking of the future. And I was an old man that owned Poloko Market, Atori. He told me, say, my son, buy, buy land. And it took me to Urugu I bought one, 11,000. That time, I was buying land. Land, I bought 11,000. When I sold it, it was 400 and something thousand. There was one, and then I loosened it again. I used it to buy somewhere. I sold one land I bought for 700,000 some years back. I projected where the town was expanding to. And I bought there. And the town came. <laughs> and they bought it for me last two years. That's five plots I sold. I bought 100 plots in one day. If na moto, if I don't scatter. I know, I know change oil, I know change tire, I know buy ball joint, I know buy fuel for her. Am I talking to somebody? Don't make the mistake my father made. My father was close to Okumagba. Instead of him, when they were uprooting Okumagba Leon to tell Okumagba to give him land, my father asked for firewood. So the rubber, that was what we were cutting. Eshi rubber, eshi rubber, we were cutting rubber. We are carrying to Okere. They will tear, I will carry on my head to go and hug in Obaho. I would have been taller than this if not for the firewood I hugged. And so I made a vow. The mistake my father made, I will never make it. Am I talking to somebody? I, have you, I challenged you yesterday. Get angry with me, I don't care. That if you are packing three cars in another man's compound, you are a mumu. Big mumu, and you don't, you have not molded one block. And you have been in worry for years. Okokoko open in your presence. Efizi, you are drinking moet of 17,000 and clean cut and barbecue fish. You teeth fish when you be small picking. Fish, they hungry, you teeth fish when you small. And you don't have real estate. Bishop, don't be angry with me. All. all those remote places I bought, my compound, I bought it 350000 Today it's up to $12 million for the plot of land. The hotel near me came, they said they want to buy it. They are disturbing me with all this their rubbish music, baby, pull over. Uh, show me your particulars. I said, I'll go be around. <laughs> my man will lie, come. I go bear them. Some of these songs of now, there's very stupid songs. 
I don't know what they are. All these Yorubas are here. Where, 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 Agbalama, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And you say, I'm voice stupid. Whether they abuse you, I don't know. Even the ones whom we listen to in those days, I will love you tomorrow. At least, it's sweet for inside mind. It is an do guy. <laughs> I'm not born again from Belekom. <laughs> you know, you know why I'm making you to laugh. So that you will not be too angry with me. <laughs> but you know I will have made millions from being a comedian. Now, don't you use the reason Isaac prospered, one of the reasons was that his father dug wells. In John chapter 4, that well in Sychar, in 1945, they excavated that well. It was 138 feet deep. Deep well. Jesus drank from that well. Why don't you think of things your grandchildren will eat from? Instead of the one that will immediately satisfy you. There's a husband and wife working in an oil company. I went to their poultry farm. They have 50,000 beds. They are still working in an oil company. The money they used to establish that. I, I got to the house of one, uh, one woman, the, the husband works in an oil company. She has, she, she, she has refused to go for holidays anywhere. They are building real estate with their wealth. Well, I, I travel abroad, but I go with wisdom. So why don't you think of businesses that will outlive you. Why don't you dig wells? Most people, supply is not a well. It is rainwater. The day they block that gate, you are over. Am I talking to somebody? Police work is not a well. The day they retire you, your child might not replace you. Am I talking to somebody? Why don't you dig wells? Things that will endure deep-rooted businesses that Jesus, Joseph was born in 1774 BC, and that land was given to Joseph. Do you know that Jesus drank in that well in 30 AD? That's 1,780 years or some year, 1,800 years later. What the great great grandfather put down was still there. If you know how much Ojuku's children, Odumegu Ojuku, are getting from rent, it will surprise, surprise you. My mother in law that sold Popo Gari to train my wife. When she died, from her house rent alone, we got enough money. We only wanted to make her burial ground. If not, we would have buried her like her own father. Her father from Okwokoko was in the mortuary. They were using his hand to touch his passbook from the mortuary to withdraw money from First Bank. Even though he was dead, he was financing his funeral. When you die as a poor man, when your children are now, they'll say, obituary, we regret to announce the death of Mr. Sosososo. But when you die and leave money for them, they'll say, call to glory. We announce the departure of our dearly beloved father to the great beyond. Papa sleep until we part to meet no more. You know why they're not talking for the poor man? They don't know where he goes. <laughs> Many of our churches are more than 80 years old. No maternity. No maternity. Sorry, sir. Presbyterian church is so old in this country. No, no sound does it. When Bill Clinton had an, uh, a heart attack, it was Presbyterian hospital. When Bill Clinton, uh, Hillary had an embolus on her head, a trombus on her. They took her to Presbyterian Hospital. We, we have five of the ten richest pastors in the world. We can't do renal transplant in Nigeria. I'm sorry to say, but this is the truth. When CAC came to Ugeli, my auntie was in charge of the maternity. Our churches don't even have maternity homes. I have a printing press. Most of the books we use in the nursery primary, they are produced by us. Other schools buy. 
I always think of the future. What people we need. Are you still with me here? The church society is going to experience a failure of government services. The church must be in a position to provide them. And then will be relevant and make wealth. The next thing is, how do you raise capital? Okay, what do you have of sale value? I had a long bus, Nissan Civilian, and I wanted to buy another bus, but there was no money. The Nissan Civilian is too big to enter the streets in Ugeli. And I noticed that the prices of vehicles are down because people are hawking vehicles. So what did I do? I sold that long bus, and God helped me. I received a phone call from the same man that brought somebody from Onicha to buy it, that there is another highest bus. And I looked at the highest bus, even though it has been used, it was clean and fine. I just added only 30000 and paid. And I have a newer vehicle that will consume less fuel in this economy and be able to enter the streets and come out. Are you talking to some? Are you understanding me? Now, if you have 100 by 100 and you need capital, why don't you sell half? You, the value has gone up. Take that money, share it into two. Use one half to buy another land somewhere where it is cheaper of a bigger size so you have not lost real estate. Are you following me? Because you are planning for the future. That that land will increase in price and you will have not suffered any loss. The money in your hand, share it into two. Invest one half and keep one half in case of Anamama or in case of Agerio. Because there are bound to be mistakes in your first investment. Am I talking to somebody here? And then, when there are mistakes, you have a, a, a buffer that you can fall back on. Instead of having a land and you are hungry, and you can't do anything with it, why don't you sell half? Are we still together here? So what have you of sale value from yesterday? Then the next thing is that, I'm still talking about raising capital in a depressed economy. One of the things you need to do is don't, don't pay whole now. Don't pay the whole. Even if you are paying annual rent, you can negotiate. I'm seeing landlords now. They are going to meet people. Uh, Timothy, if you get 20,000, it's happening now. Particularly as holidays just finished. Landlords are looking for money. Landlord, I can't pay you a whole year again. No. I'm going to pay you half. They will willingly accept. Most of the projects, when you come to my place, most of the projects we're handling, I have never had big money. I am always broke. That's why I don't fear kidnapping. You will die before me in the forest. Me, worry boy. Okay, red boy, when sell a camel. You will die before me. Mosquito, they fear my skin. And if you not take time, if I head you, if they leave only you with me, I head you, you go die. The reason I no smoke Igbo, the die smoke I no catch me. My crocro I pass Igbo. So I am always broke. So what I do is that I do my things with the cro 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 mentality, the philosophy of the ant. Supply me cement, supply me granite, supply me this. I will pay first. Then you will go. I will pay next. Are you following what I'm saying? Gradually, within a short while, I have finished paying. I am not owing any bank as I stand here. It's only urine that wakes me up. So, do your things instrumentally. Don't wait until you hammer. Too many people are carrying hammers. So, instrumentally, use the principle of gradualism. Is that okay? Then the next thing is create substitute businesses after you have raised money. Then the next thing is to use trust capital. Somebody say trust capital. Say it again. When you buy from people who know you, that's why you must have integrity. When you buy from people who know you, there's a product I buy from uh, on Nietzsche. I don't pay. It is after I have sold. I buy it for about 20-something thousand era. I sell it for about 200,000. That's blood money. By the time I finish, 
20,000, 200,000. Not the blood money be that. And I will sit in my office. It will just be, I will just be pressing the machine. Okay, 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 okay. Even if you enter my office, you're not going to know the machine. So you're not going to fit <laughs> So it is after I have sold that I pay back. And immediately I finish paying, I call him again. He will give me another set. So I have a continuous supply of materials, raw materials, and products for the market. Somebody say trust capital. One of the reasons is that people, there are not enough customers now. My bookshop, I don't have the books they give to me, I don't pay for most of them. The companies will supply me, and that's one business you can do. Look at uh, uh, success or several schools. Just look for one school and put a bookshop in front. You will get regular income. You know how much I sell from Eraser? The children eat Eraser. When they buy ruler, they will make it like this. Not because I'm not children. So, you can look for, I don't know why I went there now. Look, look for one school, put a bookshop in front. You don't need to pay for the books when you buy them. Makadan will give to you. Retican will give to you. Lantern will give to you. Macmillan's will give to you. When you finish selling, remember integrity. Return their money and you have profit. The man that opened a bookshop, Christian Waste Bookshop, in front of AGGS, he retired from the Anglican church as a venerable, but he was not vulnerable. He had up to 12 buildings in Ugeli, and he still healthy, and the son is managing it now. So you can do business with trust capital. I think our time is fast spent. You can do business with trust capital, and people will give to you, then you pay back. Then the next thing is, uh, oh God, use love capital. Somebody say love capital. That's in page six, love capital. Love capital involves, you see, church people, when they borrow money from somebody, they don't pay. And when you are doing a business, if you see church people in your front of your office, your church members, know that they don't have money to pay cash elsewhere. Particularly when you are running a hospital. You always come when they don't have money to pay in another place. So, church people, when they borrow money, they don't pay. When you hold them, they will say, is there no love in the church? One of them bought my wife's book. Pay back. He said, I heard this father. I said, I'm carrying you home. He said, you mean it? I said, yes. You know Iroro, your local government chairman. He said, yeah. I think it was my classmate in LGT. Yes. He said, okay, you mean it? He said, yes. Give me my money. Somebody will hear me when I preach for in church before, for the church. He said, man of God now, you are saying yes. For my mind, you'll be woman of Satan. Pay me my money. So, if, if you want to, my money, pay me. Don't look me like that. <laughs> if you want to borrow money, don't go and meet somebody for 50000 They will not give to you. People are willing to give only what they can lose. So meet this man for 10000 10000 10000 10000 This stagger the dates of payment. This man that is your uncle, give him the last date. But this man that is not too close to you, give him the first date. Please ensure you pay back. When you pay back, give him a bottle of wine and a product if it is consumable. What I know humanity to be, they are not that bad. They will tell you, go and use it again. Bring it later. So you stagger the payments. This is your brother. Pay him last, but ensure that you pay him. Because business is a risky thing. The day you delay in paying the other people, if they come to report to him, and he says, the one when he borrowed from me, he pay oh, they will understand. But if he say, the one when you borrow from, when he, uh, he give to you, you know grip pay, you have lost integrity and reputation. Then you sweat capital. Somebody says sweat capital. Because of the difficulty of paying salaries, in a depressed economy, do some of the things yourself with your family. Am I talking to somebody? Somebody opened um, a hotel. They came from the UK and opened a hotel in Ugeli. Suddenly, um, occupancy rate reduced and um, they were paying the bills. 
electricity bills and all that went up. What did he do? He, he sacked the workers, himself and his cousins and every person, started washing dishes and uh, cooking and doing everything, acted as receptionist. The profit margin increased. Don't say you are a director when you have no direction. Now, finally, I will jump so many things. Two things I will say, then I will pray. How did Isaac get rich? How did he get servants? And how did he get land? Number one, there was no people were afraid of investing. During an economic meltdown, be a contrarian investor. That is, people will be afraid of buying shares. Shares will come down. Buy in Nestle because babies must still feed and babies will be born. Are you following what I'm saying? Then number two, that is, he was, he, people didn't invest in there. They didn't plant in their land. So he had more free land. Number two, God helped him. He gave him drought-resistant seeds from his reserve and multiple uh, high-replicative seeds. But most importantly, now let's take this. Let's understand this. And Isaac sowed in the land, and he reaped a hundredfold. Assuming this is one acre, and Isaac planted one acre, grace times one acre will only multiply a hundredfold. That is not enough to make you rich. So Isaac must have planted more lands. It is the more he planted that grace acted upon. There is the Apoki universal formula for results. G times E times S all over C is equal to arrow. Arrow meaning results. G meaning grace. E meaning effort. S meaning strategy, structures, and system. While C is constraint. The more the devil resists you, the more the grace of God grows. That is why when one leg is paralyzed, the other leg increases in size. But you see, when grace is present and effort is absent, grace is neutralized. Come to church regularly. Stay a little, go to your work a little bit earlier now. Because they are looking for people to sack. Open your shop a little bit earlier. Close a little bit later. Be more friendly with the customers. Am I talking to somebody? Be more friendly with the customers. Put in more effort. Number two, have more, have a strategy. How? You see, if I publish book of 1,000, you won't buy. But now I reduce this to 100, 100 naira. You are picking it, not so. And I've been selling more with 100, 100 naira than 1,000 1, or 5,500. Because it is easier to give 100 naira out. In economics, there's something called the salami effect. The salami effect is that don't increase prices so fast. Be increasing it 1, 1,000. The people will not know. They will not feel it. Am I talking to somebody here? So, have a strategy. Have a structure where God can pour you. By the grace of God, I will teach you how to pay your tithe and prosper. Then finally, have a transactional mindset. Transactional mindset. They're not a drink water belly full, then you go put on weight. When I, uh, Ishmael had a well, it was not that he was drinking water, then he got rich. Am I talking to somebody? What happened that when people came with their camels and cows to drink water, what he did was that, give me one goat, I will give you water. Eh? Give me one goat, I will give you water. Give me yam, I will give you water. That was how he was able to accumulate wealth by exchanging what he has for what he does not have. You studied English. You will have noticed that my grammar is not correct because I, have P, I had P7 in English. I don't know the difference between cousin and uncle and nephew. All of them are my brothers and sisters. Because the day they taught that in, in Okere Union School, I had sore in my leg. I went to hospital. Till today, I can't recover from it. So <laughs> you, will notice that, <laughs> you will notice that my grammar and my diction might not be the best. So what do you do? Why don't you come and meet somebody like me? Doctor, as you are preaching, I will edit your books for you. Do you know I know somebody who is driving a Highlander from editing books? You can, many pastors don't have time to write books. Why don't you come and meet Bishop? Bishop, I will sit down here. When you are preaching, I will write your books. On your 70th birthday, 
we will launch it. On your 50th marriage anniversary or whatever, we will launch it. Bishop, remember your boy, 10% is not too much. Are you, are you, you understand? Bishop, please, oh, Emma, be in you know, we need to survive now. 10% is not too much. I have seen a pastor, they launched his book, he made 3 million. One of our branch pastors. That's 300,000 bucks. From writing somebody's messages, editing them, collecting money from him to publish them. You study the history. Who are, which history are you going to write? This is that of Biafra. Why don't you write, Ogboru, the political juggernaut, and then we launch it. No, no, 10 million will come out. At 10% now, 1 million. Before you finish Ogboru, go Udwanga. Before you finish Udwanga, go Bule. Before you finish Obule, with your laptop, you will have so much money in your hand, you will not have time to watch pornography. Let's stand up to pray. Una de vex. <laughs> Did you learn anything? Please write down your questions, and um, on Wednesday, hopefully, we will take questions. Is that all right? Will you invite somebody? Will you invite somebody? Lift up your hands up and start to prophesy that your case is different. Your case is different. My bishops, and the Bible says, he who is born again is like the wind. It is the wind that determines climate. You can create your own climate. You can create your own climate. Tell God, Buhari's climate will not affect me. I am going to design my own climate. God, I want to hear from you. God, I want to hear from you. God, I want to hear from you. God, I need divine directives and divine direction. I will not get lost in this season. God, remember your promises concerning me. Remember my services in your household. Remember your word you said concerning me. Open your mouth and start to talk to God. Open your mouth and start to talk to God. Tell God to remove every mumu spirit from your brain. Every mumu spirit from your brain. Tell God to give you a transactional mindset in the name of Jesus. Please look up. Look. Bishop, sir, do you know one problem with Christians? Anything they find easy to do, they don't have value. A woman making chinchi and snacks for my school sells about 4,000 naira every day in my school. And she has 10 schools. That's 40,000 times one week. That's 200,000 times a month. That's 800,000 times a term is 2.4 million snacks. And you know how to make snacks. You know how to make meat pie. You know how to do a lot of things. You are just sitting down, wasting them. Do you know because of the economic meltdown, you can prepare banga inside containers and freeze them? Because these girls with their long fingernails cannot make banga. You can even start prizing pots of soup for people. If I, if I cook a pot of soup with two kilograms of meat, so, so, so kilograms of meat, how much will you pay? There is so much in Nigeria. Me, I know they come out. Now, here I did. God bless you.